everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon, and today I have a very special guest with me. Now, this guest has been on before. Many of you know her. It's my 19-year-old daughter, Paris. So, Paris, welcome to the channel. Hi, everybody. Now, Paris is here today. This is going to be like a fun little video. We want to tell you something that happened yesterday, and it, it was just this incredible, I would consider it a miracle, literally, that happened yesterday, and we're still like, we just can't believe it. So we wanted to tell you guys, if, you are, if you're somebody that believes that miracles are real, you're going to want to hear the story. If you don't believe miracles are real and you think it's hogwash, you're going to want to hear the story and tell us your opinion afterwards. Paris. Let me just start this way. What is in your room right now? I, I have an orphaned baby rabbit up in my room. And Paris and I, this rabbit, we believe it's about 10 to 12 days old. You guys, we rescued this rabbit and it, the story of the rescue. We rescued this rabbit from the top of our neighbor's shed, like the roof of the shed. Do you want to start with how the whole rabbit thing started, like when we first saw the nest? Oh yeah, so this is started a few weeks ago, I'd say. We noticed we had a rabbit nest in our yard. And we were both wanting a rabbit anyway. So we were, we for the past few weeks, we've been praying that if any of those rabbits ever needed us, <laughs> you know, God, God could just let us know and we would be there. So we, we noticed this nest and we've been keeping an eye on it with the hopes of maybe seeing some babies walk around when they're ready to leave. We have a rule in the house that we're not gonna get any more animals. All right, and, and that's fine, I, I agree to it, but I've said to Joe so many times, I agree. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna ask you for an animal. However, if God hand delivers one to us, that's completely, like, now I'm supposed to have this animal. So Paris, what would you say about God and hand delivering this rabbit to us? I would say that he quite literally dropped it from the sky. Yes. So we have, so like Paris said, we had a rabbit nest we, in the backyard and we were super careful with it. I told the boys, you know, with the lawnmower not to mow over it. We were just hoping that maybe, maybe we would see some of the baby rabbits. We were so excited about that hope. We didn't see any rabbits in the traditional way. We didn't see little ones coming out of the nest, but we did over the weekend begin to see some of the rabbits. We did see them just, a, rabbits like suddenly were just everywhere. Everywhere, yes. I mean, and we're in Ohio and I, I know, like when we lived in New Hampshire, I don't remember seeing rabbits. I know Not they had really. them there, but um, I didn't see a lot of wild rabbits. Here, they are everywhere, literally everywhere. And we had the nest in the backyard. I believed, I told Paris, I'm like, this is a gift from God. We, we can see, maybe we'll see the bunny rabbits, the, li the little ones. So should we go to what happened with Joe first so we can get into the story? I think so. We had, so this happened yesterday, but something happened with Joe, I guess, two the days day ago. Before. No, it was just the day before. The day, well, the day before oh, I guess what happened with us. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to say it or do you want me to? Yeah, I guess I'll say it just because I was, I was the one you that was there with him. There, yeah. So we could see the rabbit hole, like the little, the, the hole, I guess the hole, um, from the kitchen window. So everybody in the house knew about the rabbit, so we kind of just keep an eye on it. Well, the other day, so this would have been Saturday, Joe suddenly, like, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm near him. He's in the kitchen. He's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. He was really, like, just very, very upset. He witnessed a crow take a baby rabbit from the nest and fly away with it. And he was absolutely horrified. It, guys, I, I'm not going to go into details because it was, it, was, it was not an attractive thing to have happen. It was horrible. But he did see this happen. And I said to Joe at the time, like, that nest is done. Like, it's done. Because now that the crows know, I was hoping that there weren't any more babies in there. Or I, it was, guys, it was just, it was horrible. And I didn't know what to do. What can I do? Dig them out? Because if I called a wildlife place, they weren't going to like, help me dig in a real, you know, an active nest out of the yard. Nature is nature. Paris and I have a little different opinion on nature being nature. But, so, we, Joe saw this on Saturday yesterday now so because joe saw it we were aware of what was going on that a crow had been coming to the yard yesterday do you actually since i said that why don't you talk about what, what happened with us beginning the story so okay so yesterday my mom and i were downstairs and we were in her bedroom and there was like the windows were open in there and we heard screaming and like i don't we you, you'll understand in a second what i mean by screaming we heard this noise we're like what is that and there was this moment where it clicked that it was a baby rabbit so we just 
ran out of the house. It was because of Joe the day before. Yes. We knew that. I, I heard the screaming, and I knew it was an animal. Like, I, I, if it wasn't for Joe, I, pro- I would have thought there was a kitten abandoned somewhere nearby. We knew it was an animal, and Paris and I shot out of that house like, in, in our socks, running outside, and you saw something before I did. Yes, so we see the, the mother rabbits like racing in circles, panicking, and she kind of runs off when we scared her. So we're looking around to see what was going on, and I see this crow flying into into a tree in our neighbor's yard, and I kind of just follow where the crow had flown from, and sitting on the neighbor's shed was a little baby rabbit. Right on the roof. What, guys, in this, if anyone has an iPhone, the rat, we have a, I have a picture on the community page if you want to see how small he is. This rabbit is half the size of an iPhone. This little teeny thing, and it was sitting on the roof with the crow above it, you know, just kind of watching. So Paris and I, we raced outside. It's in the neighbor's yard, and we immediately, the, the two of us, I mean, I'm so grateful that we didn't panic at all, and we just immediately started taking action. We were like, we have to get this rabbit. We have to get this rabbit. So we, do we jump over? Should I say the tooth about how we got to the neighbor's yard? There was a chain link fence between our houses. We, we say we jumped. We kind of halfway climbed and then fell on the other side. We stumbled into that yard very unattractively. I, I, I think I just, I, I oh, can't even imagine. It would be funny it like, to have it on we video. Want, yeah, we wanted speed. Like we were in our brains, it was like, we need to get over this fence. So we just like threw ourselves. I didn't care if I got hurt, like jumping over that fence. I just, and I, I had just socks on. So I'm putting my, my toes in, in, in between the links and I just kind of heaved myself over. <laughs> so to Paris. And there we saw, we look up on top of the shed on the roof is this little tiny rabbit shaking and it was just it was just there and we were like we have to get down we have to get down so I'm thinking to myself so Paris stayed with the rabbit well I ran to the garage to see if I could if we could find a ladder I wanted this ladder Paris is guarding it and she had this big stick to try to keep the crow away and the crow wasn't trying to get it at this point it was just happy to watch the, the comedy <laughs> so I raced into the garage there was no ladder then I raced back to Paris to tell her that there was no ladder and I was going to wake up the boys. Joe was out. He was working out at the gym and we have my son and one of Joe's sons were at the house. So Paris is still, you know, keeping guard. I'm trying to unattractively and just, I can't even imagine you guys going over this fence. I was not jumping. I was stumbling over the fence. I was so out of breath from going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I go into the house and I'm screaming to the boys, help, help, I'm banging on their door. Help, there's a rabbit on the roof, I need your help right now, help, help. So I raced back outside, I was like, Paris, the boys are coming, the boys are coming. I went over the fence again, you guys. <laughs> this time, I, you, I, I, actually, I have a lot of earrings. I actually thought I was ripping out earrings because my whole side of the face went against the fence. Now I'm like, oh my God, I lost all my earrings. So I'm like thinking that and I was like, I don't care. I need this rabbit. We're totally on point here. So why don't you start when the boys stumbled out? So the boys, my mom and I were like, into this like we're getting we were banging on the neighbor's house too trying to get them oh, out oh that's they true yes come out so they weren't home they weren't so we home were like, yeah what do we do like we can't we can't get help we didn't have a ladder the boys finally like walk out of the yes house. you guys like it, it was just yeah i'm banging on the neighbor's door bang 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 bang, bang. help help we're, we're so desperate the two of us yeah the boys do 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 they start coming <laughs> out do we have to give joe's son credit because he finally gets over the fence and we are like all right we got to do this we got to do this we're dragging like this we're chair just telling over. him like we're what basically all yeah. of a sudden we're just barking orders do this do that because he was taller than us we were in a complete panic but when i think about it now and i know it was the same with you we were completely focused on, on this rabbit like it was like we must save this rabbit at, yeah. at all costs so oh, go ahead you tell us okay. it's just it is it is the rabbit that we are the weird, like, that was all we're thinking about. We drag, like, we get this chair. But it's at this point, we're like, all right, how do we get up? We don't have a ladder. We can't, like, there wasn't, there was also a, like, garden next to the to the shed. So we couldn't get exactly against it. So there wasn't an option for, like, um, Joe's son to, like, lift me up to get onto the roof. It was, we had to climb up. 
So we get this rickety chair and we just tell yeah, them, we're in the get neighbor's on this yard. chair. Yeah, we're in the neighbor's yard. And they had, you know how you get those chairs and you have the cushions on them, but if it rains, well, I used to do this and I think they did too. Yeah. When it rains, you take the cushions off so that they're not all wet. So it was just very, you know, it was like plastic um, wraps going around it. And yeah, we're like, get on the chair right now, get on the chair. We sound horrible. We weren't like, like it was just, we were in the moment. So Joe's son's on this chair. All right, and go, go ahead, Ferris. He's, so he's on the chair, and I'm, like, bracing the chair because it's not safe to be on that. Like, let's be real. we got to give him credit where credit's yes, due. Yes, I, I agree. And we give him the stick, and our hope at this point is to kind of corral the bunny lower on the roof so that he can get the rabbit. Yes, and I also, there was another point in there where I ran to the garage went over that fence again and actually it was so funny on this one time when I went over when Joe's son saw me he was like are you okay I think he was just shocked here's this like woman just like launching over the fence <laughs> like falling on my head and he's like are you all right and I, I literally like no no I'm not. <laughs> and I raced to get a blanket because I knew there was a blanket in the garage and I'm picturing us if we could get that rabbit off the roof hopefully we could catch it in the blanket so, like, so like that a fireman, yeah like a fireman yes yeah. so that was the plan but go ahead talk about the rickety chair oh yeah so but because so because of the rickety chair we couldn't have two people with it and have the rabbit just nudged off the roof it was like we had to grab him but this wasn't working we couldn't get a good angle where he was able to safely grab the rabbit because the down. rabbit kept climbing yeah, up exactly. like he was he was not still he was yeah, he was like walking around yeah. on the roof he was and he was terrified he was shaking but yeah. he was he was walking on the roof he was going up to the top he's coming back down so we, we were panicking too like what if he bolted and jumped off the other side like what, what do we do so we finally at this point we're trying again and again to get him um you're holding his son in place and i'm like just holding this blanket just waiting and paris is holding the blanket just i mean not it was not her it was anyone it was just that was not an easy thing to do because you can only separate your hands so wide you know what i mean it wasn't what i was originally planning on his son being on the chair without needing assistance. And then Paris and I are like holding this out and he was gonna nudge the rabbit off. That that didn't happen. What happened is, I, I can't even tell you what happened at this point. All I know is I'm standing at the corner of the shed and all of a sudden there's a rabbit in my arms. <laughs> I don't know how I caught him. He just, there was like a moment where he was like a foot above my arms and then he was in there. So I think like Joe's son was using the stick. He nudged, he, I don't think he nudged him and pushed him off, but I think he kind of corralled him off and the rabbit kind of just fell. And all of a sudden he was in my arms and I was like, I got him, I have him. And it was, guys, it was a miracle that Paris caught him because it, it was like literally on a roof. She's like ho trying to hold like a blanket out and all, yeah, she had him all of a sudden. So then I was like, because of the chain link fence, like I couldn't safely get into our yard carrying a rabbit. Or like passing him over. He was like squirming in the blanket. Exactly. It was not going to work out. We couldn't risk dropping him. And we didn't know if he was injured. Oh, he seemed okay on the roof, but when he fell. So um, the boys at this point wandered back to the house while Paris and I are still in complete panic mode. So I was like, get the car, get the car, meet me. And I started taking the rabbit and I was walking to the house, you know, on another street. And I oh, need to tell how you got in the car. <laughs> okay, so she crosses, she gets out of like their, their gated area with like through the gate and she just walks over. And I, at this point, I was chaotic. I just flew over that fence again, like completely <laughs> collapsed on the ground, rolled to my feet and I'm running through the house. I'm barefoot, I'm sliding everywhere because my feet, it was had it been raining earlier that morning. And I finally, like I'm trying to find the car keys. I did not have my license on me. I grabbed the keys and I ran out that door. I get in the car and Joe had been the last person to drive the car, which means there's a big considerable height difference between us. So I couldn't reach the pedal. So I'm trying to get the seat <laughs> forward. The seat is forward so slow. It's like, it was, <laughs> yeah, it like literally will take you like a good five to 10 seconds to get from back to where I need it to be. So I didn't wait that long. I was like half on the seat. I was, I was driving while this, <laughs> while the seat was moving forward. So I'm like scrambling, trying to reach the pedals. I was going down this neighborhood street at like 40 miles an hour <laughs> at least. I just hit the gas and was roaring around the neighborhood. Hey guys, I'm on the other street walking with this rabbit in the blanket. I was so afraid he was getting it out of my hand. So I'm trying to hold him, I'm trying to walk and, and calm him down. And all of a sudden here, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> 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 so I jump into the car and we we're racing back to the house. And then remember, I didn't think I, I couldn't feel the rabbit. I was like, oh my gosh, where's the rabbit? So we did find him. He was good. 
We brought him into the house and we put him in a laundry basket. Then the story goes on from there. The story, so from here, we're like, what do we do with this rabbit? Because we're like, at this point, we, it was like this sudden moment. It was like, we're in action mode and now we're calm. We have it figured out. It was, yeah, because the adrenaline, next? we were yes. like really on point. So, you know, the adrenaline and then all of a sudden, like we have it, we have it. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, um, oh, go ahead. And he, so we found out, thank God he was not injured. He didn't, I, I still don't think he's injured. He's 100% okay, but he is young. He's little, little, he's too young to be on his own. Yeah. He's still nursing and we can't, I know most people would say, we'll just put it back into the nest. We couldn't put him into the nest for a couple of reasons. One, the mother took off, and she might have come back. I think she did come back at one point. I saw her around. We feel horrible for her. Yes. But she hasn't been back at all today. This, in, yeah, that's true. And if we put the rabbit back in the nest, he was going to be snatched again. And I, I understand some people will say, well, that's nature. I don't interfere with nature. Just, I have to say, he, seeing that little tiny rabbit, it, it's smaller than a deck of cards. He's teen teeny little rabbit screaming and then on a roof I just I don't want to say it's heartless to leave him there but it it was not something that I that I could do and live with myself it was just no leave him we could we could we couldn't just leave him out there and we were afraid to call like a wildlife sanctuary because we were afraid they were just going to say we'll just put it back and we just we didn't know what to do so ultimately we decided we're going to he's he's we think he's about 10 to 12 days old so he really just needs assistance for another week or so, unless, you know, he gets sick or whatever. We decided, you know what, we're gonna raise him ourselves for the next week and release him. So we ended up deciding that, and then we had to tell Joe the news. And Joe was not not pleased with the news no. at all. He was he was a bit angry that <laughs> that this, this that this incident had occurred with the rabbit. He didn't want to see it. He didn't want anything to do with it. He was yeah. not happy that we had it. He didn't want us to keep it. No, he did say like he did eventually like compromise that we can keep it like to to help it. Like he did understand that because another thing with nest too is there was a lot of maggots in it. Oh and yeah, Paris no funnies left. Paris, that's right. I'm glad you said that. Paris checked the nest, and this was a horrible thing to check the nest because I'm thinking to myself, both of us. Oh my God. What if there's like five or six or eight rabbits that then what are we going to do? So Paris bravely went out to the nest. I was afraid to go out. I didn't want to do it. She went out and she she dug up the nest and there were no rabbits in it, but there were like some maggots in it. So that's true. That was another reason we didn't want to put the rabbit back in there. And also realistically, there should have been six to 10 babies in there. So that does mean the crow was probably picking them off over a few days and yeah. he he was the only one left so that's why and if we had left him if we had put him back and the crow hadn't come back he doesn't have any body warmth during the day at that point he didn't have anybody to help him because the mom only comes back a couple times a day so basically keeping him was what we all and eventually joe agreed was the best decision until he can be on his own when we when this whole thing was happening joe wasn't home so I sent him a text to warn him. And this is the thing with Joe, like not that he's mean or anything, he's not. He's very empathetic and he loves animals. That's what the problem is. Um, you know, he's like, I'm gonna get attached to this. I don't wanna be attached to it and have more pain in my life. For Paris and I, it's different. We, you know, we have rescued several animals. We've had a chipmunk, squirrel, a turkey, several mice am i missing something frogs oh yeah um, frogs yeah up. i think that's oh but yeah, you said the squirrel yeah i think that's it we have a lot of animals though multiple mice multiple of a lot of these that was when we lived in new hampshire and we ra- the only one that passed away was the squirrel but we did um and that was a baby squirrel attack by our neighbor's cat so we found these injured animals we just happened to be in the right place at the right time so you know Paris and i believe in god and we believe that this is what God wants us to do. Like he, he puts us in that place. Joe is more along the lines of, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to see it. I want nothing to do with it. Like, why did this have to happen? How could this happen? I don't want it. I don't want to love another animal, that whole type of thing. So at first he was, I would say on the cold side. He, a, a little bit. He was like, you guys need to like respect me and my opinion on the matter. And we're like, yeah. we're the ones who just ripped it off of the roof. Yes. And we were like in a highly emotional state, like afraid, not knowing what to do, needing his help. But he's fine. You know, sometimes it happens with Joe. 
initially he'll be kind of reserved about something or not want to talk about it or whatever but once he kind of warms up to it so now he, he's good he's he's really good now but at the time that that was what was going on there so ultimately we decided and we were going to just raise it we're going to rehab it essentially for yeah. a week or two or whatever it takes and then we started just um, going and buying some stuff for him about uh, kitten replacement milk. We got him, like, because we've had rabbits before, so things that he needs. And we set him up in Paris's room in a little, um, it's not a box, it's, it's actually an animal carrier. We put him in there with a heat blanket underneath him. And we were trying, hoping, we're still hoping to get him back to health old enough so he's weaned because he's still on formula. So he's weaned and then we can release him. But it's so exciting for us to do this. We just, we, we love, it's been so long since we've done something like this and we are craving a rabbit. So to have this little bunny, you guys, he's so cute. He's so, we are like, we're in love and like, we're in love, like this is our child. Yes. But like, for we know it's like just for a little bit, but he's gonna be our child until then. And there's actually another part of this story that occurred. <laughs> another truly unfortunate incident. Um, so ahead. I basically, I have a very serious fear of needles. I hate needles, I can't stand them. I, the thought of them terrifies me. So, you know though, I just have to say, Paris has multiple piercings and she's talking about a tattoo, but a needle, it goes on the same way. Just a but, regular needle, no. No, never. But like a piercing going through my ear, oh, who cares, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Soon after we got him settled, I noticed that I had several cuts on my leg. Now, they weren't hurting, but the skin had broken and they were covered in rust. And I came to the realization that I am overdue for a tetanus shot. It was not the best kept chain link fence. So I said to Paris, I was like, I can't mess around with tetanus. I'm like, we're gonna have to get one. So, and she was good, you know, she reluctantly was like, all right. And then she looked at me and she's like, your arm has a cut on it too. <laughs> and I'm looking at my arm and I'm like, <gasps> and then as soon as I was looking at it, it started to sting. Like I wasn't even aware of it before. And I was like, all right, I'm not gonna have you do it without me. So Paris and I went to CVS and got tetanus shots yesterday. We were, we were so brave doing it, right? It was so brave of us. We're just, we're just heroes here going <laughs> yeah, out to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we went and we got the shots and Thank God that wasn't too bad and we got that over with and we're thinking about the rabbit. All right, the first 24 hours are crucial and then really I guess the first one to three days, 24 to 72 hours are crucial. So Paris has him in her room because it's quiet in there. She's not letting the ant, no other no other animals in there and he made it through the night. So he made it through and when we first got him this morning, he seemed a little bit, he didn't seem that well to me. Like he just seemed like he was kind of, um, oh, for anybody just, if you're wondering, I'm a veterinarian, so this is why we're taking care of it ourselves. Just so you know, like you're not thinking, well, why don't you take it to a veterinarian? I am, but he, he's living with a veterinarian. <laughs> um, so he, this morning he just seemed off, like he seemed really weak, but once we fed him his formula, he per perked up yeah. and he's doing really well right now. So he's like this little tiny thing and he's so cute and he's in the carrier in Paris's room and we are going to raise this little guy until he's old enough to be released. Yes, that will be our plan. He has, actually, I have to highlight the little milk spot. Oh yes. Oh, we, so we noticed that he had like this white patch of fur on his head and we found out that's called a milk spot and it means he's like a baby baby. So that was just, that just added to his cuteness for us. Oh guys, definitely check out the community page. I'll probably have a picture of him on, on a thumbnail of this, but it, and it was just, it was incredible. Paris and I have wanted a rabbit. We were just so desperate to have a rabbit. And, you know, and it was so funny when I said to Joe, well, God has to hand deliver one to us. Paris literally caught this rabbit in her hands. So this happened yesterday. That The rabbit's been through more than 24 hours with us. We're going to feed him, wean him, and sadly release him. But I feel good about it because... Um, He's, he's alive and I feel good that we can raise him until he's a little bit bigger and we get a little bit of a rabbit for us. That's well, it, we're, it's the perfect combination too because we, we've talked before that we don't really have room for a rabbit. We have this little baby that we do have room for until he's ready to go and then be on his own and be a little big boy. Oh, we don't, don't know if it's a boy. We've been saying he. There's no real yeah, reason. Yeah, we say he. We don't, we don't know. You know, this is the thing with Paris and I. Now, this might be an unpopular opinion, but this is, and it's obviously not scientific. It's our, it's our opinion from the animals that we've had. 
boy animals tend to be a little more dopey. Like in like they're mama's boys is what it is. They, yeah. They, girls are a little more active and independent. Like boys are just I, I think male animals tend to be codependent since we're talking about narcissism here. Yeah, they send they need like a little extra like they're more cuddly, like what we had like the um Pock and Bell, like a male and female Pock was like the one that like was the cuddly boy. Like he, he loved being with us. Bell is the one going on adventures. So when we get like a new animal like this, we we kind of hope for a boy because it means we get to be like baby it a little more. Exactly. We want the the animal so we can baby it. So we don't want independent animals. (laughs) We want to be able to baby our animals and have fun. So that is our miracle story. We literally got a, a little tiny rabbit, and he's so small, you guys, off the roof of the shed without a ladder and only needing two tetanus shots and... I mean, because I was talking to Paris, I'm like, we could have broken our legs going over that fence. <laughs> it was not attractive. But I feel like God was with us the whole time. And for anybody who loves animals and wanted to hear a fun story, we thought we'd share it with you because it was just, it was an incredible thing that happened to us. And I know so many of you love animals as well. So Paris, should we keep them up to date with what's going on? I think we should keep the updates. And I think, like, let them know all the updates for it. And there's one more thing we need to say. Do you want to tell them what you found on the side of our neighbor's house when you were walking out with the rabbit? Why am I missing this? So you, we, we you know, we did this without a ladder. And you oh, were out God, you guys. Oh, my gosh. So we were desperate for a ladder. Like, desperate. Because, oh, my gosh. So when I left, when Paris went back over the fence and I left, this time I could go because I was going on a different street. I just opened up the gate. They had a huge ladder right next to the house. We were feet away from a ladder, but it worked out okay. But yeah, there it was. We, we did it without the ladder, but man, for future reference, any other rabbits get tossed onto our neighbor's shed. We know what to do. We know where to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Just a little fun. It's not quite about narcissism, but this is a fun little story that happened. And thank you guys for listening. We'll keep you updated. Now, just I should say this too. There is the the potential that the rabbit doesn't make it. He's really really small, but I think he's I think he's gonna be all right. He he's with us for he's been with us for over twenty four hours. Um, we will keep him until he's weaned, and then well, I'll tell you updates every day. I'll put it on the community page. And um, then when he's a big boy, we can tell you more about that. Give you the full story for him. It should be seven to 10-ish days, because we're not quite sure how old he is. When they hit the three to four week mark is when they're weaned and ready to go. So when he hits that mark, We'll, we'll get, we're feeding him formula still. We'll um, wean him in the next few days. And when he's good, you know, and we're trying to be careful, you know, for anyone thinking this too, not to get too attached to him and not to cuddle him and do too much with him. But we do want to save this little guy, and he's so sweet, you guys. So thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be back, uh, well, because I'm doing videos twice a week now. Probably the next video will be with Joe. So I will see you maybe with Joe or by myself, but that will be shortly. So thank you guys for listening. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, guys.